Hi, this is Courtney with PRMA Plastic Surgery. I am joined today with Dr. Persopolo, and we are going to be talking about sensory nerve reconstruction, um, specifically restoring sensation back to a reconstructed breast following a mastectomy. Um, so Dr. Persopolo, can you explain to us what actually causes the loss of sensation to the chest wall? Yeah, sure. So when a mastectomy is performed, the breast surgeon uh, removes every all the tissue that looks and feels like breast tissue. Um, the nerves that uh, come out of the chest to provide the feeling to the breast skin and to the nipple and the areola, there are several nerves. But uh, unfortunately, during mastectomy, it's very common for, for those nerves to be cut. So even though um, the breast surgeon is focused on removing uh, just the breast tissue, sometimes, in fact, most of the time in most women, um, th there isn't a clearly defined uh, change between breast tissue and the fat underneath the skin. So it's very common to take a little bit of fat from, from underneath the skin along with the breast tissue. So even though the nerves come out of the chest wall and travel in, for the most part, in that subcutaneous fatty layer, it's very, very common for them to be damaged uh, with mastectomies. So, <clears throat> you know, there have been a couple of reports in the media over the, over the last couple of years uh, that have really bashed uh, reconstruction, in my opinion, um, because of the numbness that's associated with the process. But what was missed in that conversation was the fact that it wasn't the reconstruction that was leaving patients numb. Uh, it was the mastectomy that causes the uh, numbness in the first place. So the conversation should really be about how do we improve breast reconstruction further to include feeling rather than just what you see and touch? So it's that third dimension, really. <clears throat> so, um, but the numbness is a factor of the mastectomy, not the reconstruction, uh, which is why women who go flat uh, have numbness too. It's because the mastectomy causes it. It's not the reconstruction's fault. And what steps are PRMA surgeons taking to help restore that lost sensation? Well, a couple of things for restoring. Uh, but before we get to that point, um, there's an extra step that we're taking uh, and which I think is the most important, and that is steps to preserve the feeling in the first place. So uh, some mastectomies are more aggressive than others. Uh, some breast surgeons are more aggressive than others in terms of removing tissue. Uh, we have to always remember and appreciate that um, the mastectomy is the most important aspect of a breast cancer patient's care and also the most important aspect uh, for a high-risk patient. So patients who have gene mutations, uh, you can't uh, prioritize the reconstruction. You've got to prioritize removing everything that looks and feels like breast tissue. Otherwise, the patient's not getting the maximum benefit from the mastectomy in the first place. However, there are steps we can take during mastectomies to uh, increase our chances of preserving those nerves that provide feeling in the first place. Um, that isn't possible uh, because of the patient's anatomy, uh, or because of the location of uh, a breast cancer, uh, then we take steps to at least uh, identify the nerve in the first place. And if we can't preserve it, then we at least preserve as much of it as we can in terms of its length. And that makes reconstructing the nerve easier too. And at PRMA, we've been reconstructing nerves actually for many, many years. Um, over a decade, um, and uh, I joined the practice, I think, uh, 15 years ago now, and um, we were doing nerve reconstructions back then. And uh, 
our techniques now have uh, increased. Now we have nerve grafts. Before we were only doing reconstruction of the nerves where in, in situations where the patient's anatomy allowed for us to reconstruct the nerve using only their own nerves. So you would, for example, with the deep flap, we would make sure to get a, a long nerve that supplied the skin to the lower abdomen, and we would take that nerve with the DIP flap when we transferred it up to the chest, and then we would connect that nerve to a nerve that we had identified at the time of the mastectomy uh, or after the mastectomy if it was a delayed patient, and we would connect the two together. Um, that was That's very successful. That's our primary technique still to the day, but there are some patients where you can't get enough length on the nerve to allow you to connect the two nerves um, without a nerve graft. You need a bridging a nerve graft to make up a gap sometimes. And so <clears throat> nerves are now being used in our practice to uh, bridge the gap when we can't do uh, what we call a primary uh, repair. So so really, the PRMA, it's those three things, just to summarize. Number one, preserve sensation as much as possible. And two, uh, reconstruct the nerve where we can't preserve it. Um, and uh, there are two ways to reconstruct it. One is using the patient's own, uh, own tissue, own nerves only. And the other technique is to use a nerve graft if, uh, if you need to bridge a gap. And can this be performed in both tissue reconstruction and implant reconstruction patients? Or is it just specifically for tissue reconstruction patients? Well, um, not everyone is offering nerve reconstruction. That's first and foremost. So irrespective of the reconstruction you're having, right. uh, most practices in the country still aren't doing it. So that's not one. You've got to find someone who's doing it. Um, we have uh, traditionally only done it in tissue reconstruction patients, so uh, so flap patients, uh, not just DIP flaps. You can also uh, find a nerve with uh, tissue that's being uh, transferred from other parts of the body to. So several types of flap uh, offer the ability to um, reconstruct a nerve as well, not just DIP flaps. Um, but now we're also looking at uh, offering it in um, some cases uh, for implant reconstruction patients. Um, haven't started doing that yet, um, but it's certainly something that um, I'm looking into. Um, the insurance landscape also is something that we need to kind of uh, really evaluate. And um, th there are gonna be instances where and, and it's happened already um, where the insurance doesn't approve, the insurance plan doesn't approve the nerve reconstruction. So um, thankfully, in most cases, it's been covered, but there have been some cases where patients have been disappointed where it hasn't been covered. Uh, and that's uh, something we also have to evaluate for our implant patients uh, as well. But um, getting there, we need to cross that bridge still. And how long, typically, in your experience, does it take for sensation to come back following sensory nerve reconstruction? So uh, it takes nerves a millimeter a day to grow back. So if you, um, in, in most women, looking at several centimeters of regrowth, so... Uh, women who uh, have nerve reconstruction um, if they needed a nerve graft they'll take longer because there's a longer distance for the new nerves new nerve cells to regenerate uh, generally i tell my patients you've got to give it several months um, don't pass judgment on whether it's worked or not for a year and you may get improvement for up to two years uh, obviously uh, if you've had um, we've had some patients who have had the nerve reconstruction done and who wake up 
and they think I'm an absolute genius because they still have all their feeling and the nerve reconstruction worked. And oh my God, Dr. C, you're amazing. I can feel everything already. And, you know, it's tough to burst the, the bubble, but unfortunately it's not my good work that uh, is enabling them to feel the, the uh, you know, the breast and the nipple the day after surgery. Those patients have benefited from preserving the nerves in the first place. Uh, there are obviously some instances where we're able to preserve nerves uh, and we also find a nerve that was cut or, or another nerve that we can use to add a nerve reconstruction to. So some people get preservation and a nerve reconstruction. It just depends on the patient's anatomy, uh, the cancer surgery being done, the breast surgeon involved. Uh, we're very lucky. We have some great breast surgeons here in San Antonio who are always very eager and willing to try new things. Um, and they've been very receptive to changing techniques to, to allow us to help them identify the nerves and to help them uh, preserve the nerves. So I'm, I'm really very happy about the team we have here. Um, our breast surgeons have been great. Um, but uh, yeah, if, you, if you're lucky enough to wake up with feeling, it's not because of the nerve reconstruction you've had, it's because of the nerves that, that have been preserved. How does breast sensation compare to a native breast when a patient has undergone sensory nerve reconstruction? Is there a regained sensation everywhere around the breast? Is it the same as you know, Mother Nature provided? So I what have been your patient? Yeah, a great question. So I tell my patients that the degree of sensation that they back will be a bonus. So um, the only way to get close uh, to uh, Mother Nature is to preserve the sensation in the first place. Um, and as we've said, that's not always possible. You've got to prioritize the patient's cancer care always. Um, it's, it's life before breast. Um, so, but if we manage to preserve the nerves, then that patient will have a very good chance of uh, maintaining, uh, if not their natural sensation, uh, something very close to it. Uh, it's very common for patients to have nerve preservation, um, but they still notice initially at least uh, a, a significant change. But in those patients, um, the sensation returns to, norm to normal far quicker. So if someone has lost feeling initially and then a week later it's back, it's because the nerves were bruised and not cut. It's again, you're not gonna regain a ton of sensation from a nerve reconstruction after a week, right? So um, the, the, the sensation you get back months and months later, that's the sensation that is coming back because of the nerve reconstruction. Um, in patients in whom we can't preserve the nerves and who have no feeling, uh, and they get some feeling back because of the nerve reconstruction, it's very rarely going to be the same as mother nature. So, so uh, it's important for people to realize that. Definitely beats the alternative of a numb breast, but we're not at the point of uh, uh, restoring mother nature kind of level of sensation. We still have lots of questions that need to be answered. Uh, it's still a very much an evolving field and evolving technique. I know we've been doing primary reconstructions for a very long time, but especially where the nerve graphs are concerned, we don't know um, really which nerve is best. We think we have a good idea, um, but uh, we don't know how many nerve graphs are optimal, uh, how many we should be performing in each breast. Um, we don't know what the ideal length of nerve graft is necessarily. Um, so th there are still lots of unanswered questions. Thankfully, we're part of a big multi-center uh, study uh, right now that's ongoing. We're very excited about that. So over time, we should have more questions to the long list of, sorry, more, more answers to the long list of questions uh, that we have. And as always, you know, the more you learn, often the more questions you have. So not, we've got a long way to go. Yeah. 
what about patients who've had nipple sparing mastectomy and then also undergo the sensory nerve reconstruction? Is nipple sensation restored at all? So women who have nipple sparing mastectomies tend to regain more feeling anyway, even if you don't do a, a nerve reconstruction. Um, we've, some studies have looked at that uh, and preserving the nipple areola, even if you don't do a nerve reconstruction, it improves the quality of the, the sensation that comes back and um, it can also improve the speed at which it comes back. Uh, so, and that's a very important point. There is some nerve regeneration, especially with tissue reconstructions, especially with flaps. Uh, there is some degree of nerve regeneration anyway, even if you don't do a nerve reconstruction. So uh, what we're finding is that nerve reconstruction and certainly nerve preservation improves the level of feeling further, you know, beyond that. So we know it's, we feel very strongly, it's very, very worthwhile. But even women who don't have any nerve uh, construction can regain some feeling. The big question for us in our practice is, do you, you know, should you do a nerve reconstruction at all in someone who's having a nipple sparing mastectomy? So our approach is that you should still always prioritize nerve preservation. So uh, the last thing we should be doing as reconstructive surgeons, as microsurgeons, as plastic surgeons, is cutting a nerve to be able to reconstruct it, right? So um, in patients where we can preserve the nerve and we can't find another nerve that's been cut, we just won't do a nerve reconstruction if they've, uh, if they've had nipple sparing. Um, in a patient who's had the nipple area re uh, complex removed and we're doing a flap reconstruction and replacing the nipple areola with new skin that will later become the new nipple areola complex, then we try at, at all costs to do a nerve reconstruction in that situation because you really want that skin that will in the future become the new nipple areola, you want that to regain as much feeling as possible. Again, will it be like mother nature? No, uh, but it's better than complete numbness. So that's a great question about the nipple sparing. So it really, the bottom line is that it depends on the patient, it depends on the patient's anatomy, depends on whether uh, we're able to preserve the nerve, and if not, it depends on whether we can identify a nerve that's been cut. But we're not going to cut a nerve just to, be, just to say we reconstructed it. And what about patients who choose to go flat and then still have that numbness across the chest? Do they have any options for nerve reconstruction? Not yet. Uh, good question, though. Um, so to reconstruct a nerve, uh, you've got to have an, uh, a nerve that's, you've got to be able to identify nerves that, that, that have been cut, okay? So we've talked about identifying the nerves as they come out of the chest. Um, so that's where you plug, let's say you're using a nerve graft, that's where you plug the nerve graft into, you, you plug it into the identified cut nerve as it comes out of the chest, because that's the nerve that used to supply the breast. But now, in, in the case of someone who chooses to go flat, where do you plug that into? Where do you plug that nerve graft into? So with a nipple sparing mastectomy patient who's had a nerve cut, you know that that nerve graft has to connect the cut nerve as it comes out of the chest to a cut nerve behind the nipple and the areola, if you can identify one. But with a patient who's, cho who's chosen to go flat, where do you plug into? So that question, no one's really uh, looked at as far as I know. 
the thing about patients who choose to go flat, all those nerve endings that have been cut that are now on the chest wall will grow back into the mastectomy skin flaps that are now flat on chest. So all those nerves should grow into the tissue anyway. So over time, someone who chooses to go flat should, um, just like a patient that I mentioned earlier who has breast reconstruction, who regains some feeling anyway, a, a lot of the time, patients who choose to go flat should also experience improved feeling uh, over time. But like I said, it's going to take a while, many months, and uh, even up to a couple of years. Well, thank you for answering our questions today. And um, you have a good afternoon. You too. Thanks, Courtney.